Hey, yo. Hey, yo. It's time for yo. How's it going, everyone? My name is Frank Cavone. And I'm Brad Porter. And I'm Doug Quimby. And we are kind of live. Kind of living. This is the Mirth Films Podcast, episode 61. The, one of the final podcasts for quite some time, and we can't. We're, we're so happy all of you are here tonight. It's a gala. Uh, first time we got to do something like this was five years ago with Big Time Kitty, the band, kicking things off tonight. And we want to give an extra special shout out to the Kitty Boys and big shout out to Put in Place for letting us do this here tonight. One of the greatest venues uh, of yeah, all come time. On. That was a really poor applause. Come on, can we get a little Woo! bit more out there? Yeah, you don't have to woo for us. Also, while we're giving out applauses, I would like to thank my wife, Taylor, love saying wife. Uh, for telling me three seconds before we went on air that my fly was down uh, so I could correct that for this podcast. So everyone, Taylor, just for a quick round of applause for Taylor, if you don't mind. Yeah, Taylor! Love you. So as all of you guys know, you can watch and listen to the Kind of Live, Kind of Living podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. Uh, what else? Uh, I think that's about it. But I you mean, can also watch all of our videos right on our Mirth Films YouTube channel. Everything from live music to documentary type stuff to skits with Caleb and everything in between. And uh, when we do the Kind of Live, Kind of Living podcast, we usually start with uh, how our week's been. But I think a more appropriate thing would be how's, how's our year been? 2023 was an interesting year for Mirth Films. Uh, a lot of collaborations with a lot of different people, working music festivals, working with Art for Dead over there, stand next to the table. Uh, big shout out Radio Radio X too. But um, yeah, so guys, I mean, throughout 2023, how's it been? Balancing life, work, and everything in between. That's a hard balance. That's the one thing I've learned this year. But I feel like it's been one of the best years I've ever had in my life. Uh, a lot of great people have come into my life this year. We've done a lot with Mirth Films when it comes to covering people at festivals, to even having our own festival and doing It's a Gala here at Putnam Place, having our podcast out of Putnam Place. It's just been an amazing year, and I, it's hard to put into words just how wonderful it's been and how far this ride has taken us in. I'm, it's, it's just amazing that we're here right now. What about you, Brett? Well, I got to say, as a whole, 2023, I mean, I did manage to do one of the wildest things anyone can sign up for in the year 2023, and that's get married, and I highly recommend it. If every marriage could go as fantastic as, these, as this month and a half has gone, I would recommend everybody stop what the heck they're doing and get married. Everything else fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, this year definitely was interesting for, for us in all different ways. We all had our different levels. Oh, I'm sorry. The festivals are great. I highly recommend those too. And, uh, but, yeah, I think this was the year we finally hit our stride, especially with uh, people like Amy Clemmy and everybody in between just lending a hand and, and believing in what we're doing. Uh, I don't know. It means everything to me. And uh, just to be up here at Putnam Place, uh, the place where I really can say I started shooting photography also feels really good, but this year was crazy. A lot of ups and downs. Um, but then when you look at things uh, after time has passed and you think about life and you think about you know how the year started, where it led to and, and what it got to, I, I have to say that th this second half of the year was easily one of the best years of my life for many different reasons. We'll get into that. Um, but Awesome, guys. So, you know, first off, how did this, how did this whole gravy train start? It, uh, there is a lot of different Where ways we can look at Where's the gravy at? The gravy? Where is that at? It's spoiled from Thanksgiving, so <laughs> I, I hope you didn't eat any of it. Um, but, yeah, so how did Mirth Films start? Well, first off, back in the day, Dougie and I grew up skateboarding together. And uh, it was in seventh or eighth grade when we met. What would you say? I would say maybe seventh, eighth grade for you, a couple years before that for me, but that was when I saw you skating down my road and I like peeked out my window and I was like, a skateboarder, which is pretty rare in Lake George. So I had to come out and say hi. And we weren't even friends at first. I was a bully to Doug yeah, and you, I uh, have to admit like that me. now. And, <laughs> and uh, because he was such a better skater than I was. And that's when I realized, <laughs> oh, you know scumbag. what? <laughs> I was a scumbag. I'll admit it. But what somebody can realize is uh, that was the time I was like, you know what? There's a lot of great skateboarding going on in Lake George, and this is the time to grab a camera and learn the ropes, I guess. So, 
as time went on, we uh, got into jam bands, which unfortunately could have ruined our lives, but it didn't. Uh, and uh, we started seeing bands like Fish, Formula 5, uh, Wild Adriatic. I mean, who else at that time? This, uh, the Scunches, who were the Claims at the time, one of, to me, the most influential bands of all time. That, uh, that EP that they put out on CD, uh, which some people don't know what that is anymore. Uh, no clue. It was great. And, uh, and, and from that, we start to meet some people that we would call our friends for the rest of our lives. And I would say it was maybe 2017, we made our first video with Caleb Lewis, one of the funniest guys in the world. Caleb and, uh, and I, we did this skateboarding video at our brand new skate park, the Lake George Skate Plaza. And uh, from there, it was just time sat. Nothing happened. In the, in the meantime, but I was But I will say, when you posted that, I was living out in Las Vegas, and that, I saw that video, and I was like, dang, I need to be back in New York <laughs> doing stuff with Frankie. I'm like, what am I doing out here? Editing and we, photos. <laughs> and we all missed you. And, uh, and yeah, I, I was shooting concert photography at the time for New York State Music, and uh, I still wanted to make original videos, and I was like, why don't we try to house all this shit under one roof? take Mirth Films, put our original videos under it, and also, you know, put the live music bullshit that we do as well on there as well. So, as I say as well three times. Um, but that's, that's kind of how Mirth Films started to become something. And then one day, January 1st, 2018, we launched a website for Mirth Films, and uh, we launched it on my buddy's couch. Uh, shout out to Ramon Sanchez, who should be here soon. Uh, it, it, that, I, I'll tell you, moving to Albany and being away from you guys and not having the ability to be around my own surroundings made me really have to think a lot. And uh, so it, it was just like, how do I spend my time? So I was like, you know what? Each night, I'm going to get a six-pack of Bush, 16-ounce, a can of Red Bull, and maybe a snack, and uh, just crank out as much content as possible and try to start something and try to do something with what our bond as friends became. Because that's the thing, we always were friends together. And then after it happened, it kind of just started unraveling, I guess. Mirth Film just kind of just started happening. And in 2018, we already met each other in college. And how, did, how exactly did we meet, Brett? So, depending on who you ask, there's about five or six different ways this went down. But I can tell you, at least from, from my experience, as somebody who at the time was a social drinker and did not realize I was verging on this thing called uh, alcoholism, was at a, a frat party at 139 Brinkerhoff Street in Plattsburgh where I saw this dude, heard his name. I'd heard the name Frankie Cavone amongst the Plattsburgh campus for many a month now. And he comes in and tells me, hey, we're having a kegger tonight. Come over early. I'm like, okay, you get there. And uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Eric Aronson, who we know is Redmond, Redmond, shout out. I had to convince him that I was on the list for this party because, for one, they had this crazy thing called a kegger. And having a cup for free at a kegger is like, dude, that's throwing the bowl right into the china closet. It's a beautiful thing. But you asked me one, that night, you're like, do you, do you play guitar? I'm like, no, I, I play bass, if that helps at all. So the next time we, we hung out, like a week later, there was some party going on, whatever it was. We locked ourselves in your room, and you're like, that music fucking sucks. <laughs> and you introduced me to two bands that night, Fish and the Grateful Dead. <laughs> and, that, and that really, unfortunately, kind of changed the scope of my life for, uh, for the foreseeable future. But we started off jamming out to ACDC Bag, and then like some, some, and other songs. And from there, you're like, dude, I just want to make videos, man. I'm like, yeah, make videos. I'm, do it. Proud of you. I hope, that, I hope you make every video you ever want to make. And then fast forward to like 2019. I'm now a year out of Plattsburgh. And that was actually before that. I believe it was November. Uh, no, first weekend of October 2018. You were like, hey, you live in Fort Ann. We want to make a video about the Warrensburg garage sale. I'm going to have Doug with you. It's like, word, I'm in. And now, was this the first time you guys met? Yeah, I had no idea yeah. who Brett was. <laughs> I kind of just dude, did and the I old still, classic loop dude, in without dude, saying yeah, anything. It was, yeah, I had his, like, I was friends with him on Facebook, like, calling him on Messenger, meeting at the Warrensburg Price Chopper. 
And I still remember the first, like, the first interaction I had with Doug as he pulled up in his 1999 Toyota Camry XLE with the sunroof. I was like, dude, so nice to meet you. Can I smoke in your car? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't know at first. I was nervous. I was really, I was really worried. Thank you, fresh. The last thing I want to do is ruin a good first impression because Daddy wants to smoke some Marb Smooths. But to go back to that, actually... After you graduated, after I graduated, when you were living at the Regency Apartments in Queensbury, we found ourselves staying up till like three, four in the morning, like trying to solve the world's problems, one Marb 27 at a time. Just constant, constant cheap beer, constant cigarettes, constant pop balloons. Like, and it all, at the end of the day, all kind of got us from where we, were, where we were then to where we are now. And it all started because we locked ourselves in your room to avoid listening to like, like that like house music. Yeah, so 2016 Frankie is much different than 2023 Frankie. Uh, yeah, he in did. some ways. 2016 I, Frankie did not have any grays. But then again, 2016 Brett didn't either. That is very true. <laughs> but then, you know, time passed, and, and we did our thing. We, we did the whole first year of Mirth Films together, got some merch. 2018, big year, at least for just starting on the right foot. Went to some of our first music festivals as Mirth Films. Disc Jam. Um, you know, Disc Jam that, with Tommy Shassler. With Tom, big shout out to Tom Shassler, huge Twiddle fan and great friend. Uh, you know, that was really like, okay, we could do this. This was like, I don't know, like back in the day, we fell in, the, in love with the movie called The Doors based on the band The Doors. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it just, like, there was just, like, this camaraderie thing that we had at that time because we were all trying, we were all going through our psychedelic phase in life in 2012, and, like... Some of us still are. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we were like, you know, we're going to save a bunch of money up and move to California, and uh, it didn't happen. <laughs> it did not happen. <laughs> so, but this is kind of what it felt like, that same thing, you know? Like, just a couple of guys who want to get together burn all of our time away and look at screens all day. You no, know? for real. And, like, I mean, both me and you came from a video creative editing background when it came to skateboarding. You went to Plattsburgh for video. I moved out to Las Vegas to do uh, just video professionally. And so, like, when you came to me with, like, the vision for Mirth Films, like, late 2017, early 2018, I was like, I can see what you like want to do and like I definitely want to help in any way imaginable to make that happen. Now you may ask where did the name Earth Films actually come from? Well, <laughs> let me tell you a story. Actually, let me have Doug tell you a story. So what so, happened? <laughs> it all started with Fish playing Glens Falls Civic Center once again. I think it was the year was 2013. 2013, baby. It was like after a uh, 20 some odd year hiatus where I mean Fishman went basically shrieking on stage and Glens Falls was like we can't have that anymore. It was a little breezy that night. A little breezy. So they were coming to play and I was not able to actually go attend the concert in person but with Fish you can purchase a live stream so I was like well if I'm not going to be there I'm at least going to watch it. So the night happens I log into live Fish but I can't because I have no internet connection. So I'm trying to figure this out for like an hour. I talked to my dad. He's like, oh yeah, I paid the internet bill. I don't know why it's not working. We reset the router and everything. Nothing's working. I'm not being able to see this fish show. So I actually give Frankie my like live fish info. I was like, somebody needs to watch this. I and paid I was $20. Like, yes, <laughs> now I can watch this from Plattsburgh. Because at the time, one of our friends was like, listen, I'll buy your ticket to either Jungle Buggy, a festival that Dave Inman was putting on at the time with Twiddle headlining the Roaring Brook Ranch in Lake George, or go to Twiddle, I mean, or go see fish. And I don't know why. I was just like, you know what? At that point, I was like, not like, I was in it to fish, but I was like, you know, I'm going to be with all my homies if I go to Jungle Buggy. So, yeah. No, definitely feel that. But go on. So, my dad eventually came up with the idea. He was like, why don't you ask your upstairs neighbor for his Wi Fi password? And I was like, fantastic idea. I don't know why I didn't think about that in my panic. So, I go up the stairs, I knock on the door, and I'm like, hey, 
explain this whole situation about this band that I need to see online that nobody will really understand. And he was like, yeah, of course you can use my um, Wi-Fi. So he's like, the Wi-Fi name's this, this, and that. And I was like, okay, what's the password? And he was like, Mirth is King. And I was like, that's strange. But I'm like, I have no time to question this. I've got fish to see. And I ran downstairs, typed it all in, and I started watching the show. And basically, every time anybody on any friends came over, I would just always give them my neighbor's password, mm -hmm. Mirth is King. And I would be like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't ask. So, dude, the wild thing is, is uh, I don't remember what prompted me to do it, but I, I looked up where Mirth comes from. And so, fun fact, it's actually something from the Bible. And at least looking out to everyone in the crowd, I feel like none of you read that. But Mirth... <laughs> But uh, mirth is a biblical term meaning good feelings, which is, I mean, very vague. But also very fitting. And it was fitting. And, <laughs> and, and was that fitting. was the thing. At that point, you know, Doug and I, we were degenerates. Uh, Doug, I dropped out of college, uh, and Dougie... I was on probation for <laughs> unspoken things. Dougie was on probation, and we would just go to Dougie's house and just get annihilated every night. And it was the greatest time ever. And we, we took Mirth as King, and it, was, it became this inside joke with my friends and I. And uh, so when the time came to start Mirth Films, we already had a name. And it, it just, which is great, because like, this whole thing is based on like, the bond of our you know, friendship here, oh, all yeah. of us here. You know? And secondarily, based off of a Wi-Fi password. A Wi-Fi password. So, you know... Big shout out to Gaylord and uh, he, who is also a Shriner. Mirth is a big Shrining. I, I, I don't even know if I'm saying this right. Like, it's no, a, like it's Shriner, Shriner isn't the charitable organization. It yes. is a charity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so he had go karts out back that had the Shriners logo on them. Go karts I really want to for raise Shriners. Them. Yes. They wear the hat with the string on it. Honestly, I'm jealous. I wish I could pull <laughs> off a hat like that. But yeah, so 2018 rolled in. 2019 was a real year where we're okay. Established a little bit, figuring things out, going to festivals like Strange Creek Camp Out, losing our minds in the woods, um, going back to Disc Jam, Rock the Dock, Tumble Down, so many great times. Big shout out to Tumble Down. Big shout out to Twiddle, who, uh, while not all of us were into listening to them, they were definitely a huge uh, tipping thing for me, at least. Like when it came to jam bands, after seeing Fish in 2012 and discovering smaller bands, local music, and seeing Twiddle play in Lake George to, you know, 50, 60 people at a festival that Dave Eamon threw at the Fort William, Ho Fort William Henry Hotel, and, and then immediately going, making it up to Grizzlies, or going to um, St. Lawrence to go see a show, and, and, and it was that, that was like, okay, there's a community with this whole jam band thing, and then, you know, moving to Albany was a whole different story, but... Um, jam bands are definitely like a big uh, inspiration and influence on this whole thing. As much as we like to call ourselves skateboarders and dabble into certain things, if it wasn't for jam bands, if it wasn't for people like you right now who are here tonight at a Jarrett Hearthstone show, at a Greg Bell show, or just going to the palace and supporting Danny Taylor, one of the best people ever, um, you know, there would be none of this. And there's a sense of community that we saw it and we wanted to be a part of so and and for me too it was like in 2016 like after passing out on a mattress uh in the middle of leonard street and like realizing what am i doing with my life i was like i want to be a part of this and like add to what 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 could i do to help this music industry so that's where photography came from so I was bored. And I feel like we also i mean getting into fish originally like they at that time always put out their shows um, to listen to. They would live stream them. But when you went to like the smaller band show, you didn't have those options. So be able to, to provide those options to like, you know, us and the people, I feel like was just an amazing thing to do because there wasn't that thing at that time. And like, I feel like it was always awesome to relive the show that you went and saw. Exactly, and that's where Formula 5 was one of those bands. You know, growing up in Lake George, New York with Greg Merrick, James Woods, um, you know, we had this band that we believed in and to this day are one of our favorite bands of all time. And uh, just to be able to work alongside with them and learn the ropes and see how they do things and see how this whole thing works behind the scenes was really interesting. But just to keep things going here, 
uh, because we got this guy right here, one of the most important people in Mirth Films, Brett Porter, everybody. Big round of <laughs> applause. Thank you, guys. Brett, Thank you. So we rekindled the fire in what year? 2021? Uh, beginning of 2021. So How did that happen? So essentially how it started was I was taking a look at the content Mirth Films was creating, and I was you know, kind of like analyzing the different types of content they were creating, the, type of, like the direction they were trying to go in, and... I, I mean, having known you at least, having known you and having known you at least a little bit, at least from the garage sale, I just looked and like, what the fuck are these guys doing? And I had this idea, and it was an idea that came to me out of nowhere, unprompted by anything else. I had this idea as somebody who, so for, as I said, Frankie and I went to Plattsburgh together. Frankie went for full-blown video production. I went for broadcast journalism. Once upon a time, I wanted to be a reporter. And... Then I was like, I don't ever want to shave my beard ever again. I'm, <laughs> I will take this degree and do anything else I want with it. And I pitched this idea to Frankie about five in the morning. I shit you not, about 24 Corona lights in. Like, hear me out. News. Fast news. Really fast news. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, tell me more. <laughs> so we, had, we came up with the idea, and we called it the Mirth Minute. And the, the moniker we were rolling with was... All the notable shit you needed in 60 seconds or less, or it was free. And he was super on board with it. I would write the news stories. He'd put me on camera. We would make it look like a full-blown newscast. And then I slept in, like, four weeks in a row. Like, four different, like, Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Like, yeah, dude, I'll be there. I'll be there at that time. But I don't do mornings, and I still don't do mornings. He does So finally, a month later, I get like a dad talk from Frank. And it's like... Listen, it, son. It was basically, a, I'm not mad, but I'm severely disappointed. So really, I guess what drove me to wake up in time and really put this newscast together was he threatened to take my Xbox away. And from there... <laughs> Don't make me do it. But no, no, I really... I just thought it was a cool idea. And I just came with this idea and said, hey, hear me out. Does this sound good to you? It sounds good to me. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. We had like... We, I think we did like 10 or 12... And then you moved from Albany to Troy. And then from Troy to Glenmont. And then Glenmont. Glenmont. Back to Troy. Back and you to, know what's funny? Three Troy. of those moves were this year. What was that? <laughs> I said three of those moves were this year. Yo, <laughs> it is wild to think about, like, January 2023. Like, that seems like 80,000 years ago. It was. Yeah. And, and to add on to this, when he offered this idea up, I mean, we were in the height of the pandemic, 2020, 2021. I, at this point, we're doing palace sessions. We're going uh, up to Vermont to go live stream some twiddle shows from the Essex Cinema and everything in between. And for me, the most sterile thing in the world was doing a live stream. I am somebody, I just... Dude, you guys wore masks in a live <laughs> stream in separate rooms from one another. That's you really embraced the, the, the you really embraced the pandemic. It when was everything was on the line, and there was the only one thing to do. <laughs> you guys and that were in for, separate rooms from each other, and it had to happen because you know at that point in time, you know touring bands, you know you you have to be safe. And and I was and, also working at a grocery store, and I was like, yo, there's so many people I don't know coming in here. I'm like, I'm unsafe. So when Brett brought this idea up, it definitely like started stemming into different aspects of what Mirth Films is today, and that I got to give a huge round of applause for. Actually, can you guys give a big, uh, big round of applause for this guy one more time? You don't have to. It's okay. Thank you, Brett Porter, everybody. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, at this point, Dougie and I, we had a little bit of a falling out. And, well, you know, a... being, you're, I would say, listen, man, you are man. my best friend of all time and always will be. And to go through that and then come out on the other side was, I don't know, man, amazing. No, it was definitely yeah. really good. It was really good. Is it, and for, the, for any friends getting into business, just remember that you guys are friends and it doesn't have to be all business at the end of the day. Although, it should be all of one or all of the other. Min Max. Exactly. And, and also, when, can somebody grab me a beer? I'm sorry. It's anybody, I, please. I, I will say, you know... I have a tab. Being on the same page is, is a very precious thing, and preserving that and communication is huge, and I will say that has been the success of Mirth Films for what it is right now. So, 100%. Um, but, you know, as time goes on, you know, we got into 2022... 
uh, brought up uh, the Wild in the Trees Music and Skateboarding Festival, which we did with uh, proceeds going to Ronald McDonald House, and then just kind of kept doing the thing. And, uh, and, and to, to, to still do it and do it with you guys, I wouldn't want to do it any other way. And, you know, people come and go. We've had a lot of contributors who have helped out in the past and a lot of contributors who are still helping out right now. And uh, it's just really nice to have the support. And uh, especially, I'm not good at asking for help, so these guys know. You just are help. actually oh, yeah. super terrible at it. Yeah. <laughs> Even when we ask you if you want help. Dude, like, this, ah. this, kid, this kid's too prideful. <laughs> also, I don't want anybody to think I'm being weird, but I would like to just point out there's like seven lights on me right now, and they're all really bright. Thanks, you're not Woo! so bad yourself. I don't know who that was. Don't stare into Because I can't see out there. <laughs> but just to keep things moving on, because, I mean, you guys want to hear some uh, Big Time Kitty? You want to hear some scunches? I want to hear some Big Time Kitty. What about Glass Pony? 100%. Um, we're just going to jump into it. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, this is something that maybe takes a lot of deep thought, but... Favorite Mirth Films moments for you guys personally? Summer Not Snowboarder. Even no, I don't. E summer Snowboarder. That will be imprinted in what my brain. What was Summer Snowboarder? So we had this fantastic idea. <laughs> Wait, is you it know, not in the name? It's, it's, no, it's 100% in the name. I don't even know what I'm about to explain. It was snowboarding in the summer. Instead, you don't need, you don't need, you know, snow to snowboard. You just need grass and a hill. So we're just thinking of the concept of like, okay, we're just going to have this dude who's just obsessed with snowboarding, cannot wait for the winter to happen, and just snowboards all year round. So Frankie and I, I was a snowboarder on July 4th during a heat wave. On July you. It 4th. was like 90 degrees outside. I get in full suit, full snow suit, the jacket, the snow pants, the boots, everything. We're like, let's try to go summer snowboarding. We hit a couple of hills. It it actually worked out a lot better than I thought it would, but we didn't want it to work. We wanted me to just be tumbling. Could we didn't you fall want me in to... with it? I, it was a lot of intentional falling. We went to this one spot, and it's um, located right at the landfill in Lake George, and it's basically like 100 foot down, and it's just, it's just a really long hill that you go like sledding and tubing at. So I was like, perfect spot to try to go snowboarding. So without... Even hearing Frankie, I go down, I tumble down. Every time I stand back up, I whip myself up all the way down. Turns out he only used like 10 seconds of that. He did not need me to go all the way down the hill. And it was just, at the end of it, we wanted me to walk all the way to the beach in Shepherd's <laughs> Park. And the people looking at me, because, you know, <laughs> if you're wearing like snow gear, when you're walking, it makes it this sound. On 4th of July. You know, like a chicka, chicka. Chicka, chicka. And if you're in the middle of the summer, it's like 90 degrees and you're sweating, and all of a sudden you hear that, you're kind of like, what is happening? I remember passing Price Chopper in Lake George, and yeah, it was like 90 degrees. And, and just to see people turn heads to you holding a snowboard with goggles on, I was just, and then go to sit on the beach. People that were was... avoiding me. They were like walking like three feet around. It was pre pandemic social distancing. They're like, we don't need to be around that guy. But laying in, laying in the Shepherd's Park with the snowboard in the sand, me, that was... Cowabunga. I will never forget Summer Snowboarder. What about you, Brett? All right. It's hard to pick one. So instead, I'll pick, like, my top three. On a given day, any one of them could take the gold, but they're all up there. I would say, as a viewer... Watching the your short clip on the judge Ju your judge Judy appearance, phenomenal. That motivated me so much to f to pirate that episode and watch the whole fourteen minutes in standard definition. <laughs> it's freaking in, in just insane, and weird to see how you really didn't age at all from the age of eighteen to thirty. I just stretched. You you just stretched. You just stressed. But that's why I got dude, right here. There is something, and I highly implore all of you guys to do it by however uh, means you see fit. Season four, episode fourteen of Judge Judy. Watch Frankie Cavone get a verbal ass whooping from the judge herself. It's fantastic. I don't remember who. I don't even remember who was suing you. I just remember that they were a business owner. Gerald Bongiorno. 
Yeah, we'll never forget. A, a Bongiorno, yes. Gerald Bongiorno. <laughs> Wasn't he in? Uh, wasn't he in? What is that? Uh, Goodfellas. Les Mis. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I think that was something that I always heard the lore of, and then getting to watch it. And this isn't like the something that happened a few years ago. This was a month and a half ago. I, I found it. I found it on on my own uh, on my own cognizance and just got stoned and watched it. Just absolutely tremendous piece of daytime television history. And as I said, highly implore you guys to watch it as well. In terms of actual content, the first Mirth Minute really, really meant a lot to me. That was the drip. Because <laughs> it meant a lot to me because it was, I guess, lack of a better word, it was proof of concept. It was proof that I at least had enough chops to know how to read, read the news to people and be just and be a condescending asshole to people on the internet. And and the best part was, is that written in this, so to those of you who don't know, any newscaster you watch is reading on something called a teleprompter. It is positioned right around the lens of a camera, which is why it looks like they're looking you right into the, your soul when they're telling you about, like, the house fire on, like, Arbor Hill or something. So first time reading this newscast, crushed it. One take wonder. I, at that point, would have blown a point one eight if asked. And... At the end, I found a way to shit on Dave Matthews, which is a personal hobby of mine. I am not a Dave Matthews fan. And just to be able to do that and for Frankie to not cut it out meant a lot. And then I would like to say it goes without saying, but the fact that we've done this not only once but two years in a row, Wild in the Trees, that is my jam not only just because of ticket sales going toward a good cause, but at the end of the day, after now two, now really two summers in a row of the three of us all in full-blown festy mode, being able to look back and just like take a breath out and say, after working all of these festivals, this one's ours. We did this. We got these people here. We booked the bands. We, we are responsible for, ev for how this went better or worse. And we like, and we paid everybody, and we had fun, and we, and we drank a lot, and and at the end of and at the end of it, after, after now two years in a row, at the end of a long weekend, we can all just kind of, sit back and look at the work we did and say we we did this. But, there is one thing that I, I since talking that really takes the gold for me, so we had the first we had a staff meeting where we were pitching ideas. And Frankie was like, hear me out here, music festival. And I'm like, that's great. And I'm like, hear me out here. What am I going to say? Ah, oh, say it. 24-hour <laughs> podcast. Oof. I was about it. I was totally about it. I could have gone on for 24 hours straight, which I did. And ever since then, April 29th, 2000, no, April 30th, 2022 to May 1st, 2022, 3 p.m. to 3 p.m., we produced nonstop content getting so at the end of our rope that by the end, we actually used up all of Doug's internet. Used up all of his internet. Ran Next out down. of internet. I was and okay I, with the bees <laughs> hanging out in top of my door. We, we taped an iPhone to a it's tripod. It's funny how Wi-Fi is the, the factor of this whole company. Wi-Fi was really the, the, the saving grace Turns out you detriment. need internet. Turns out you need internet. But the fact that we were able to pull that off really just, uh, over the course of it, I don't th really think we garnered a lot of viewership. I don't think we really set any records by any accord. But the fact that just three people who had no idea what the heck they were doing with the help of guests and, uh, well... Six man. Uh, yeah, with the help Shout of guests. Six man, yeah. With the help of Doug's internet. <clears throat> and, oh, goodness. How many Corona lights did we drink? You had 36... Yes. I had about... And then my wife was there. Okay, at the time, girlfriend. We went home at 3 p.m. And at 7 p.m., after 24 hours of straight, bartend, uh, straight podcasting, excuse me, I bartended. And it was the greatest night of my life. That 48 hours total, second only to my wedding. So another thing, I highly recommend getting married. I also highly recommend doing a 24-hour podcast. I would not recommend doing a 24-hour podcast. I also would not recommend doing a 24-hour podcast. 
But I'm happy you remember the date, because I don't. That's what I'm here for. Black that one out. So, when it comes to my favorite memories of Mirth Films, it's this year, and solely this year. Every year has been a great year in different ways. Uh, but first of all, for what it's worth, Rye Bread Music Festival was so much fun. Rye fucking bread! Rye fucking bread. <laughs> Just having the bond that we did there... Uh, Nick Botto handing off the keys to uh, the Chamber of Commerce's room where we got to just fuck around the whole time, oh, drink I, alcohol, I, piss I, I banged off. the gavel of a government building. Do you understand how fun that is? It was a good time. And, uh, you know, just like, it was, it was a shit show. Let's be real here. I, it's, we're not going to beat around the bush. It was a shit show. But it was a good shit show because it was rain. It was exciting in every way, you know. We got O'Teal in the in the in the uh, in the barn. I mean, yeah. that was one of the most magical moments of fucking musical history, if you ask me. And then just falling in love there, and then just being with you guys and and Amy Clemmy. Uh, big shout out to Amy Clemmy. She'll be up here in a second. She, actually, everybody just give a big woo to Amy Clemmy. Scream. <laughs> Without her, we really would not be able to put any of this on tonight because everything from the food to the design, she thought of. She carried the team for this, for this night. So thank you so much, Amy Also, Clem. yes, and also on that note, I have to thank Amy Clem for bringing party favors. Yeah. Are yeah. you saying Russian dressing? I'm not saying. She did bring Russian dressing, but she brought party favors. Please inquire within with our admissions department to acquire your party favors. Yes, indeed. And then also, this is just with you, man. Oh, I, by the way, get your minds out of the gutter, please. Doing Mo at the Palace Theater and working for Mo post-pandemic and, and getting to record those shows uh, February 24th and 25th was huge. And just being there with Chuck back and hail Satan. But just... Just to, just to see Chuck play live and, and do his thing and then just record the sets for the band. That, like, going to Modown 2012, I would have never thought I'd been able to do that. And it's just funny kind of where things take you. And then, I don't know. I guess just, uh, yeah. Every, everything really has its own charm. ADK F Music Fest, Rock the Dock, Memorial Miltdown, um, the Greg Bell documentary. Big shout out to Greg Bell. <laughs> 31 years in business. But we're going we're gonna to wrap things up here. We're getting to 7.51. We got some uh, music coming up here. If oh, yeah, you guys what? haven't eaten yet, make sure you eat. Uh, yeah, have a good base before you drink. Um, well, why don't you let the people know what they have back there? So we have a taco station. We got dogs in the pile. Um, we dogs in the pile are pigs in the blanket, by the way, if you did not know. But they're dogs oh, in the pile tonight. Oh, I thought it was cute, and I pitched it to them. I'm sorry. We got Snickers. If you're not feeling yourself, eat a Snickers. Uh, we got Twix. And then uh, shrimp cocktail. That's right. Thank you, stranger. And then we also got Jeff Picarazzi on bass. Uh, that, is, that is him. That is him. We also have the kind of um, live, kind of living special, the kind of lives PBR, kind of living, the dirty Shirley. So right now we're going to... Very gonna, delicious. Before we get into what we've been watching, listening, playing... We're going to push we're, merch. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to bring up Amy Clemmy. Everybody give a huge round of applause for the one and only yeah. Amy Clemmy, but, everybody. Well... Well, while the fourth horsewoman is hello, getting hello. acclimated to the set, I would like to take They're a quick second finished. to let you guys know that us at Mirth Films are in a state of liquidation for our merchandise. Everything on the merchandise table, $5 a piece. You can get yourself a pen if you guys are Anything. pen people. Get yourself a shirt if you're a shirt person. You get yourself an 8x10 framed print if you're an 8x10 print person. Ladies and gentlemen, Amy Clemmy. Yeah. Amy Clemmy. Amy Clemmy. So, Amy Clemmy. You'll Am I saying it right? Or merch. <laughs> so, Amy, uh, for those who don't know, Thanks Amy takes wonderful photos. Uh, she's been working in the in the publication industry for for a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, yeah. so, Amy, what what? Mm -hmm. I, not, I guess not. What led you to us? But what made you want to be a part of this bullshit that we are started here? <laughs> I love the stuff you do. I love your photos. I mean, you're an inspiration um, behind the lens. And the fun videos, skateboarding, bring me back to my childhood. Um, my friends used to skate. I suck at it. I'll never try again. Don't ask me. But I'll photograph you doing it anytime you want. Um, 
it's fun, but it's just not for me. I can rollerblade. That's about it. But uh, you guys just always put out fun stuff. You always look like you're having fun time and everything. Like every event, I see pictures of you, and I'm like, I love photographing, and I just want to have fun doing it. Like I don't want it to be a full-time job. I, it's just a hobby. And you guys allow that to be for me. And you, we have fun doing it, I think. Anyway, like rye bread. <laughs> rye fucking bread. Rye fucking bread, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, you have best, to say it that way. Best bread for a Reuben sandwich. Don't ever forget it. To curse? Am I allowed to curse? What? Am I allowed to curse? You can say whatever you want. We'll allow it once. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Fuck. Save it. Hey, shh. Use it for this. Shh. It's worth it. Shh. Is Nick here yet? Nick is not coming tonight. Nick still has a broken angle from Wild in the Trees, even though he skateboarded. He also person. has a bedtime. It's 9 o'clock. Nick yeah. is 16 years but old. I have yeah, a we have, pack we have, for at, him. At the end of the day, we have to understand Nick B., albeit he is our unpaid Want intern it? and child prodigy of birth films, is a child legally. I tried talking to his mom, uh, and that didn't work. <laughs> so if anyone has any better ideas, please. Well, Send them by us. Now, Amy, I just Nick, just if you're just from, watching us, we miss you. All right, we miss, we miss you. you Nick. I don't know where the camera is. I look like a fool, but I'm like. Where now, is Amy, <laughs> what what has been some of your favorite moments of uh, oh, just what we've been well, through since April 2023? I know you guys talked about rye bread already, but oh my God, I was new to festivals this year. I've never been to one. Um, we started with Rock the Dock, which was awesome. Rock the I don't Dock know Music if Festival. Anybody has ever heard of that one, but I really love that one. It's uh, intimate in the sense that you're in one enclosed area that's small, and anywhere you're standing, you have a good view of the, the stages. Am I right? Like, no matter where you're standing at Rock the Dock, you have a good view of the stages. Damn right. You can right. be on one of three boats. I mean, not Shout just out one Luke boat, Dow. but like three fucking boats. Oops, sorry, I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> keep it it's okay. Um, I forgive you. But uh, that was a great time. That was my first festival, short and sweet. And then we go from that to three or four days at Rye Bread. How many days were we even it there? It felt like a week long. <laughs> It was a long time. It started on what a Thursday night. It started on a Thursday night, yeah. ended on a Sunday. Sunday, yes, yeah. yes. There was maybe probably left Monday. A oh, stolen it was a golf cart. A stolen a golf cart involved. There was a, a curtain outfit. There was a torrential downpour. Brett, Brett, Brett saved the day. Um, I no didn't joke. Do anything. He saved Mert's equipment at Rye Bread behind the main stage. Torrential rains came pouring saved down, it. and this man went out there and just made sure nothing was getting wet underneath. Like seriously, a round of applause to fucking Brett for saving all of Don't the equipment do it. until Mr. Cavone showed up with his, uh, his little Honda Civic. Oh, I would like to. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I got like I'm, four <laughs> hours of sleep the night before because we were doing whatever the fuck we were doing that night. <laughs> And I still had to work at the New York Lottery. And uh, I had you know, to direct the lotto, make sure the addicts got their lotto numbers. Then they you know came what, back to... You know what they say, kids? Three for 20, no deals. No, no deals. deals. No deals. So, Amy, I just got to say, it, it, Mirth Films would not be the same without you. Now, having you on the team, well, thank we're you. all super thankful no, to have you. you a part of this. And, uh, yeah, no, it's just nice. It's like we got our own little family here, away it's from fun. a family. And I, I love that. So. And I want to give a special shout out. I don't know if he's here yet, but Rob Smittix, man, you showed up last night and Robbie. you helped us out. You helped like helped us with some of the food and the cooking. It's just an overall great time last night. And I don't even know if you're here, but if you are, complete shout out to you, buddy. So now this is usually the time of our podcast where we do uh, what we've been watching, what we've been listening to, what we've been playing, if you play video games, and we just like to share what inspires us, and I kind of am culminating this with everything that I was inspired with this year, which is very few things, uh, but I'm just going to start it off. If you guys uh, have Wi-Fi, if you subscribe to Amazon... Daisy Jones and the Six is one of the greatest shows ever made, and I highly recommend every single being watch that. Um, it's highly influenced on Fleetwood Mac, and it's, uh, it's a show that's uh, up for a Golden Globe right now, and I, I can guarantee you'd love it. And then, um, for those who don't know, you should. Kyle Dunnigan, one of the funniest guys in the world. Hey, yo. It's time for a yo. It's always time for a yo. But Kyle Dunnigan, he's on YouTube. He does face swaps and, and does comedy of... Uh, other people. He's an impersonator. He's a great guy to watch. And if I like him, you should watch him. Um, listening, Metallica. If you don't like Metallica, uh, I'm sorry, but I do. 
And uh, they're, every single album's great except Lulu, so whatever album you pop into the CD player or on Spotify is going to be a good one. I highly recommend Disposable Heroes off Master Puppets. Uh, great song. Also, I also have to give, uh, for listening, I highly recommend My Morning Jacket. Never seen them in my life until this year, and they instantly become one of my favorite bands. My Morning Jacket kicks ass. Jim James is a cult leader. Uh, there's no denying it. And then Glass Pony. My real favorite band of all time. Every album, Washed Away, uh, Nowhere Daydream. Nowhere Daydream is one of my favorite albums, front to back. Um, just all the work by Jeff Piccarazzi, uh, Shanda Dewey, Greg Pitts, and Eddie Ho Italian. It's amazing. And, and even uh, people like Brian Mangini from the Sea Pods to um, Matt Richards, who have also been uh, on, recorded on the albums as well. Big shout out to them. I uh, met Glass Pony right here at Putnam Place in 2019, opening up for Formula 5 at the end of Formula 5's career at the time. And uh, wow, so happy to found, find those guys, especially at the time where, you know, noodling and everything on the guitar is really cool, but rocking out is even cooler. So big shout out to Glass Pony. <laughs> Playing Skate 2, one of the best video games ever made. Not Skate 1, not Skate 3, Skate 2. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, if you have no life and choose to not want to have a life for uh, the time being, Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the best video games ever made. And then Hi-Fi Rush, a, a game that was shadow dropped by Xbox earlier in the year. Such a fun game, reminds me of Jet Set Radio Future on the original Xbox. Fucking cool. Uh, and that is what I can recommend. I could sit here and talk about a lot of different other things, Iron Maiden, whatever it may be, but it's time to pass it over to Brett. Brett, what have you been watching, listening, and playing? God, a lot of, lot of pressure there. That is a solid list. I understood about half of it, but that is a solid list. Watching. I'm a big Seinfeld guy. I've always been a big Seinfeld guy. Will probably continue to be a fan of Seinfeld. Uh, additionally, uh, I'm probably a little late to the party here, but I've been watching Matt and Shane's secret podcast. That is with uh, Matt McCusker and Shane Gillis. Been enjoying that a lot. Just two funny dudes. Honestly, Shane Gillis kind of reminds me a lot about me. Just a random fat guy who's funny sometimes and sometimes tries too hard. Uh, listening. Believe it or not, I mean, especially throughout this course of festival season, Dude, I got introduced to so many wonderful musical acts, and, it's, and they're all kind of in my rotation. But if I had to pick three bands that like, I could really narrow down that took up the most of my listening time, I would have to go with, offhand, I would caution Shoe. Shoe is definitely taken on a good portion of my listening time. Keep in mind, by the way, January 13th, Friends Day at the Trap in Fort Inn. Shoe, capital Zen. Free show, be there. Uh, but Shoe definitely taking up a lot of my listening time. Shoe, and then, jeez, uh, Eastbound Jesus. I would caution. Another solid, another solid easy. December twenty second. You can catch them at the Hollow, sold out show. So if you didn't get your tickets, sorry. After parties at Paulie's. Oh. And if you did get your uh -huh. ticket, we'll see you there. But. I Andy Frasco, Andy Frasco in the UN, definitely a number, another solid pick for, for a, a band that's taken up a lot of my time. I found out I was in the top 0.7% of listeners on YouTube Music, so I take that and run with it. But uh, overall, if I had to pick like the one band that the one band that I'm playing every time I'm in my car and going from destination to destination, Joe fucking Mansman and the Midnight Revival Band. Cheers to Joe. The last, Joey. The last staple of outlaw upstate New York culture. And uh, playing, well, my wife and I actually did, uh, did something for the first time recently. Thank, thank, thank you. We, we're, hopefully, as our marriage goes on, we will have a lot of firsts. But this one isn't like a monumental one. We had a game night at my, at my home. And we all did uh, played that Jackbox party pack with my poor friends. Uh, I don't know why I emphasize the poor part, but we played Jackbox, Jackbox Party Pack and just full of tremendous, ridiculous games. You log in with your phone, it's all Wi-Fi based. Dude, super fun. Turn your dinner party into a dinner rager, Jackbox Party Pack. 
That's all I got. All right. I, I finally really have, have a list. It's been a minute. Is that a set list? Is that Glass Bowie's set list? It actually is my set list for tonight. So watching Stranger Things. I finally got around to watching that Stranger this Kings? year. It's been around for the past five years. Really good. If you're into conspiracies, it's low-key about the Montauk Project. Moving on. <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> Tell me more. Um, Formula One, Drive to Survive on Netflix. Um, I may not watch it as much anymore now, but it got me into the F1 racing sport, and I've been into racing games my entire life, and to finally get into an actual racing thing was pretty cool for a little bit. So I don't know what it is with the Lake George motherfuckers, man. Everybody what? wants to be in a race wait, car. Wait, wait, wait. Have you watched an episode? Do you think I have time to watch TV, Doug? Exactly. Have you watched okay. an episode? So moving on. Listening, Mac Miller, always been on the docket. He's the freaking GOAT. If you have never listened to Mac Miller, go listen. If you've listened to him, go listen again. You won't be missing. Oh, my God, so good. Um, the Art Bell Podcast, shout out to them. Shout out to Dogs in a Pile. Shout out to Eve Block. Shout out to all the local bands in the area. It's Y'all been crushing it. Um, playing Far Cry 6. GTA, I, GTA 6 coming out next year. I don't know if That hair looks so real. Um, <laughs> and as much as I've been playing Skate 2 and Skate 3 Session, the brand new skateboarding simulator, I've been following it since the start of Mirth in 2018. Now fully out and amazing. If you ever want to get into skateboarding but you don't want to get hurt, pick up Session for any one of your gaming consoles. And also... Please sponsor me, Session. <laughs> now moving on to Amy Clemmy. All right, all right. So what is it I have to what do? What have you been watching, listening, playing? So you guys have all mentioned movies and TV shows. And if my husband, I don't know where he is, but he'll admit that yeah, if, can, it's on Brian TV, if the TV's on, up? it's on the evening, and it's a Rangers game. Any New York Rangers fans in the crowd? Woo! Let's go Rangers, right? All right, all right, that's it. So, which is weird, right? Because stereotypes say that you men should have all listed, like, sports and not a woman. The Steelers you know, are not we, playing we ball not, right now. That's we why try I don't not to follow <laughs> stereotypes here. <laughs> but anyway, New York Rangers all the way. Um, <laughs> that was actually a very ignorant thing to say, and I'm a little hurt. Oh, I'm what have you been? What have you been, what have you been uh, listening to? Listen to as in like local scene or can it be anything? Whatever you want to say. Anything. I listen to a variety. Um, Spotify, I go through my liked list, which, and I just put it on rotate. I don't care. I mean, one minute you're probably going to get Eminem. The next you might get Super 400, which is one of my favorite. Shout out local Super 400. Bands. What? Shout out Super 400. Exactly. Dude, Shout out Super they, 400. What are and they their, doing new, here? their new thing gets Zep. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, oh, there I go again. I'm sorry. No, and, and you know what? Just to, just to wrap Putnam Place into this, uh, every Monday night, you want to go to a free concert? Oh, here. Free concert with amazing musicians? Yes, here. Here, nonetheless. Here. Every Monday night is... Family Tree Band. Family Tree. And if you're a musician, show up, and you can end up on stage with them, just playing and jamming out with them. It's pretty freaking cool. They Damn never right. know what they're going to play. And then they're going to do it. We actually did a film on that, did we, we not, did. Frankie? We did. You can go check it out. People in Places, uh, we did. Family Tree Band. But I also right big shout out to uh, Kenny and Lori because to me they are the one of the, uh, I don't know, you talk about a power couple. You talk about power couple having for a sure. bond and communication and sure. raising a child within the yep. industry. Uh, there's not a lot of people who can do what Kenny and Lori do, and big shout out to and them. And they make it look so easy, and they're a family with beautiful hair. Like, literally a family of beautiful hair. And beautiful talent. All three of them play. All three of them are, like, book readers. It's just an the incredible The next generation. Family. There we go. I Thanks highly implore anybody to. who has kids, please take them to shows as young as you can. Just like the Canes do. Just and just shout out to everybody who has shown up tonight. We really yes. appreciate all of your support. Very, very impressed by this that. This wouldn't be possible without you. So thank we you were, guys we so much. 14. You deserve your own round of applause. Seriously, thank you guys so much. I know I've been very sarcastic tonight, but without you guys coming by and just supporting us and listening to us rap about fuck all, 
while you guys wait for music to play means a lot to us. And I cannot emphasize that enough how much I appreciate that. And with that, this has been episode 61 of the Kind of Live, Kind of Living podcast, where you can watch, listen on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. And uh, again, thank you all for coming tonight. We're going to have a great night. It's just getting started. And uh, if you have anything you need to do tomorrow, make sure you get a Reuben and make sure you buy a six pack of 16 ounce bush. And with that, Brett, what do you got to do? Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them, guys. Thank you for Thank coming you guys. tonight, guys. It's a gala. Woo! Let's fucking party. Alexa, play some big time kitty. <laughs>